Good morning, friends, family, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube friends. It's Glory Query. It's that time of year again. The Christmas season is upon us in the year 2020, a famous year for the COVID pandemic. The whole world is struggling. I'm here to share a Christmas miracle story of my family about my little boy in the Christmas in the year 1996 when he was eight years old. It had been a tough year. I worked four jobs. I worked seven nights a week on a paper route for over four years. I worked Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays set up in a weekend business setting I had. I worked at 7-Eleven from 3 to uh, 11. And during the days I was on call as a substitute teacher. I was extremely small and I was working myself to death. But that year and that December was unlike many. I had all my bills paid. I had food in the house, which often I didn't many years prior. I had $25 in my pocket. All my presents were bought for my family during the year, secondhand, but looked like new. And I was really happy that I had done this without help from anyone. So, one Saturday, my son and I, that was eight years old, named Dustin, we went out on the delivery route, the paper delivery route, to do what was called collections. As I was pulling in the driveway, my little boy said, Mommy, 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 I know what I want for Christmas. You want to know what the catch is to this story? My little eight-year-old had never written Santa Claus a letter. His school teacher had actually called me that year about it, and I told her that he'd never written Santa, and he had never asked for a single gift, not pencil, socks, notebooks, or anything for Christmas. And then he's screaming, Mommy, 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 in the driveway, I know what I want for Christmas. He said, Mommy, can we drive and I'll show you? We pull out of the driveway. I'm stunned. I'm on, it, it was like an alert announcement. And my little boy is finally going to show me something he wants for Christmas for the first time in his life. So, I pull out of the driveway. I think we're going to go to a local little you know, store like maybe Ben Franklin, W.T. Grants, or whatever it was around back in those days. He's 32 years old now. And we drove about six blocks from my house, and he was directing me through the neighborhood. And he screamed, pull over, pull over, Mom. He jumps out of the car, and what do you think he does? He runs up in somebody's front yard, and he throws his hands up in the air to the heavens. And he screams, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. I want God in my front yard for Christmas. Well, it was a life-size manger scene, and it had the works. It had the manger, it had sheep, horses, donkeys, wise men, shepherds, lambs, hay, star, angel. This was a high-dollar wish he wanted, and he didn't know it. Well, I went to the local stores, secondhand, looking for a used manger scene. There wasn't one to be had. The cheapest one they had, and it wasn't even lifestyle, was a little one. It was fifty nine ninety nine. I remember it. Well, I shared that story with just one friend. Before I knew it, the next day, I'm getting a phone call from the local Virginia Pilot newspaper out of Norfolk, Virginia. They don't believe the story. Well, I told them they were welcome to come to my house, and after school, I would walk them over to meet my little boy. We lived directly across the street from the school, and that they could talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. And she did. And she walked my little boy back across the street home with tears in her eyes. The article appeared in the newspaper. I got calls from all over the country some from out of the country, 
CBN got involved, religious rights people got involved, attorneys, doctors, lawyers, neighbors, the whole Hampton Roads community got involved with phone calls. Before I knew it, I had over a dozen manger scenes. But one local millionaire trucking businessman and a local news reporter personality, Bruce Rader, got involved and they called me and they showed up a few days later and we staged for my little boy to have the blessing and miracle of his life. So they come by in these two big trucks high in the air and they're filled with stuff and my little boy's in the front yard and he says, oh mommy, somebody's getting God in their front yard. They rode down the street, that was a dead end, they turned around, they came back up, they pulled in front of the house. Bruce Rader jumped out of the car and he said, Do you know a little boy named Dustin Carver? He said, My name is Dustin Carver. He said, Well, you had a Christmas wish, didn't you? He said, Yes, I want God in the front yard. Well, he got God put in the front yard. You know what he said that first day when he said he wanted God, which was symbolic to manger scene? He said, people need to wash their God mommy in the yard and keep them clean. God needs to be clean. So, we got the manger scene. People were showing up, bringing money. We'd never asked for money. Uh, money was being sent. Money was being left in envelopes in the mailbox. Stuff was being left in the door on the porch. Walk up, stuff in the yard. We had enough food that lasted until February that following year. I'll never forget it. it the last piece we ate was on um, Valentine's Day the following year. I'll never forget that sandwich food we had. And we had over a dozen manger scenes that were delivered by people that donated. And I kept telling them I didn't need them. So me and my kids were going all over Hampton Roads donating uh, manger scenes to other families. Well, that story got syndicated and it went national and international. I heard from people all over the world in the country. And I have a life-size a statue of Jesus that's in the living room that a local priest from the uh, naval base brought saying God touched him the story touched him and he felt God wanted him to have it we still have that to this day um, there was a lady that had to touch him on the head and then there was some lady in the car that used to always show up in front of her house but never got out and every time we come out to talk to her she took off in the car she did that for 13 years even when we moved and relocated, she found where we were. And in that same car, that lady would sit for an hour looking at that manger scene. Two years after that article, I mean that story, that miracle story came out, they did a column two years later saying whatever happened to the little, go little boy that wanted God in the front yard for Christmas. And it all started all over again in the year 1998. So... This has been a tough year for all of us, and the world is struggling, and my family has suffered. My sister's house burnt down. My brother died on his birthday. I was out of work eight months. Life is tough for everyone in the world. So, see if you can provide a Christmas miracle for somebody you know that's struggling and needs relief and help. So, have a blessed Christmas. God bless you all with joy, cheer, good health, and prosperity. This is our Christmas story, Gloria Query and son Dustin Carver, from the miracle story of what my little boy wanted for Christmas. That was God in the front yard, and God delivered, and mankind gave. And another thing, Touched by an Angel contacted us years ago. And they were interested in doing a possi possible show that Christmas season, but they went off the air that year. God bless everyone. Put my family in prayer. I pray for all of you. We'll get through COVID. Happy New Year 2021. Hope it's better than this. Love, Glow.